the field can really help an image, help you focus on what you're what you want the viewer to look at. And it's very easy to do inside of VRED using the camera tools. So inside of the camera editor, under lens attributes, there's the button to enable depth of field. Once enabled, you will now see the results of the depth of field when the anti-alias is enabled. Now what's in focus is dependent on what where your point of interest is. So if I double click on the fender, now this is the area of focus and the rest of the vehicle is now blurred as the depth of field has been calculated. I can make the number smaller to have a, a larger effect or a more aggressive effect. And if I make the numbers bigger, the f-stop bigger, it'll be a more subtle depth of field. Now this is really great. You get really good results. But when you hit render, what you see is what you get. This will be the results. I have no way to edit this after the fact. So I'm going to show you how to use the depth channel in the render passes to be able to adjust this and have full control over this inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to disable my depth of field. I'm going to go to my render settings. General settings I have for this rendering set to 512. This is going to be a full global illumination rendering. And for output, 1920 by 1080, I have export multi-layer EXR PSD for render passes enabled. And under my render passes, I need to check box this to on. And I'm going to render out just the beauty channel and the depth pass. When that's done, once I have this all set, hit render. Now that the rendering is complete, let's go into Photoshop. Now we've opened our image inside of Photoshop. You'll see that under layers, we have two layers, our beauty pass and our depth pass. The filter we're going to use is blur, lens blur. Lens blur is grayed out because this image is currently in 32 bits per channel. Now we're going to switch it to 16. Get this pop up, hit don't merge. So the depth pass is a grayscale image where the lighter the gray, the closer you are to the camera, the darker, the farther away. I'm going to go in and just go to my levels and adjust this so we can get a better sense of what it looks like. Plus this will help us when we use the filter. So just going to adjust my levels something like this. So I have some white and some dark. Hit OK. Now the next step so I'm going to, I want to copy this image. Control A for select all, Control C for copy. And now I want to turn on my beauty pass again and select the beauty pass. Go to my channels. If I, if I click on the alpha channel, I hit paste. I've now pasted our depth map as the alpha channel. So what that allows me to do is when I go back to my layer, select this layer, go to filter, blur, lens blur. The lens blur tool gives a little pop out. You'll notice I have a nice even blur across the whole image. This is not what I want because I want to use a source for my depth map. I'm going to pull down to alpha. Now it's using that alpha channel as the source for my depth map. What's cool about Photoshop is now the blur focal distance will determine what is in focus. And where, wherever I click in the image becomes the focal point, and it uses that depth map to blur the rest of the image. So if I click the something in the for foreground, the foreground is in focus, the rest of the vehicle blurs out. I can actually increase the radius to get a more 
to really see what's going on. So click on the tire, it's in focus. Click on the mirror, it's on focus. Click on the rear fender, it's in focus. Instead of having no control over the depth of field, I have now complete control in Photoshop over the depth of field. So I could say I want the Autodesk logo to be in focus, and I want the rear, the background of my HDR to be slightly blurry. So maybe something about this level. So nothing too aggressive. I can hit OK. And now it's applied that blur to my image.